Welcome back! In this video, we are going to create new ligands with a goal of finding a ligand that will form a particular hydrogen bond with our target. Since we have a strong idea of where to modify the ligand to enable this interaction, thanks to the crystal structure, we will use an R group enumeration to design new ligands. Go to File, Open Project, select liganddesigner.prjzip and click Open. The only entry in the project is the same 5-IEY structure that we worked with earlier, but with the sulfonamide removed from the ligand. This structure has already been prepared following the same protocol as we used in the earlier video. First, let's make sure 5-IEY ligand truncated is included in the workspace. Next, Go to Tasks, search Ligand Designer, and choose the only option that comes up. The Ligand Designer panel will open on the right side of your screen. Currently, your view of the protein ligand complex is quite busy with the representation of the protein structure. Click Analyze Workspace, and now you have a completely different view that allows you to see the same protein ligand complex but in a more abstracted way. Instead of showing the whole protein structure, the ligand designer allows you to visualize the growth space in the pocket, which is represented by the cloud surrounding the ligand. Growth space is simply the area surrounding the ligand that is not the protein. The lighter blue regions are more buried in the pocket, and the darker blue regions in the growth space are solvent exposed. There are many different displays and workflow options available in the Ligand Designer. We recommend looking at the videos linked in the module description for a more comprehensive look at additional workflows that are not covered in this video. You can enumerate straight into the growth space, quickly sketch and dock, displace or replace waters that have been identified with water map, cyclize ligands, and much more. Additionally, you are able to easily toggle on and off several different displays. We're going to adjust this in just a bit. Before we get to that, let's look at the multi-parameter optimization, or MPO, radar plot in the middle of the panel. This allows you to quickly evaluate ligands that are in the workspace by customizable MPO scores. Click Edit, and you can customize the property ranges you can add or remove properties from your MPO. Let's change it from the Lipinski preset to the drug-like MPO, which also includes chiral centers. Click OK. You can see that the plot has changed and the properties listed have been updated as well. We are going to use the MPO score here as the value we are trying to optimize. Since we know that docking scores are not designed to correlate with binding affinity, Ligand Designer does not incorporate them. Instead, we will focus on the predicted binding pose and other properties. Under Display, click Ligand Receptor Interactions. In the workspace, you can now see feature representations of the various possible interactions that could be made with the protein. These pharmacophore features which we will cover more in the next video, are labeled by the type of feature they are and the residue with which they are associated. Click on the aspartate 86 hydrogen bond acceptor feature. A pop-up appears asking if we are looking to form a ligand protein interaction. Click OK. Various potential attachment points will now be labeled with yellow arrows. Select this attachment point the para-hydrogen on the phenyl ring. We will be enumerating various different ideas at this attachment point. The kind of enumeration we are going to do here is an R-group enumeration. Maestro comes with several curated R-group libraries that are integrated into the ligand designer workflows. For example, if you want to form a hydrogen bond with a hydrogen bond donor, you could add a library of hydrogen bond acceptors to your desired attachment point. If you'd like to use a custom library, you can do that by loading the library into the Create R-Group Library panel and then selecting it here by clicking the cog. 
You can also filter by several properties during the enumeration by clicking the funnel next to the cog. We're going to skip that for now. Click Enumerate. The ligands are enumerated and docked into the binding pocket using a maximum common substructure protocol. This means that only the parts of the molecule that have been added to the pre-existing compound will be sampled. Everything else will be locked in place. You will notice that not every idea that is enumerated is added to the entry list. This is because not every idea can fit in the binding pocket. This is a great way to filter out ideas that sterically do not make sense, assuming a retention in the binding mode. Shift click to include all of the ligand outputs. You can now easily see that the constrained core docking locks the position and conformation of the core. Now let's see if our enumerated ligands did in fact form a hydrogen bond with a spartate 86. In the structure hierarchy, search ASP86. Check the box to display the atoms for a spartate 86. And we can now easily visualize the hydrogen bond that is formed without the clutter of all the residues in the binding pocket. Uncheck the box to undisplay a spartate 86 once again. Let's sort the enumerated ligands by MPO score. Under post-processing, choose sort by MPO and click sort. The group is now ordered in the entry list by MPO score. Click the arrows on the top of the ligand designer panel to flip through the entries. By looking at the MPO data, you will see that all of the compounds are low molecular weight and have a low A log P. The biggest difference is that entries have sulfonamides, which increases the polar surface area. Now, let's make a modification to our best scoring compound. Include the entry with the top MPO score, 6AE1001 underscore 1, in the workspace. Click the Workflows dropdown and select 2D. We are going to see what happens if we change this hydrogen to a fluorine. Go ahead and do that now. One thing you will see right away is that the property values and MPO score update dynamically with the sketcher. So if you are trying to optimize the MPO score, you can actually triage your designs before you predict their poses. The MPO score improves slightly due to the lowered A log P and small increase in molecular weight. Now, click Predict Pose. The new compound is quickly docked and added to the entry list. If you like this idea, click the star icon in the ligand designer to favorite it. Now, go back down to Post Processing. Click Save to File. Note that you are also able to sort by good interactions or clashes as well as export to a spreadsheet, FEP+, or Live Design. Click the drop-down that says All and select Favorites. Especially when dealing with long lists of ligand designer outputs, it can be helpful to favorite the ideas that look promising and export them separately. Click Save. Now you can name the file ligand underscore designer underscore ideas and save it so you can easily share it with colleagues. In this video, we went through how you could use the ligand designer to perform targeted R-group enumerations and quickly dock sketched compounds. In the next module, you can read through our best practices for pose inspection to get a better understanding of how to identify issues with predicted ligand poses. Thanks!